Uo will replace Kamard. Williams, their top lockdown defender. Tough luck from the line. Rose. Notice how early in that half, Rich, the defensive pressure has gotten up a little bit higher for Wake. They're pushing it a little bit more. Smith helps them there. Because Smith that. is quick. Out of bounds over the top of the backboard. A little slower pace caused by the defense. That's about as much emotion you're going to see from Jimmer Fredette. He slaps his hands, upset that he made, missed the jumper. He's a pretty cool customer out there. Williams to the corner, Smith. We'll reset it. He needs to find Teague in the corner, not Williams. Teague's the shooter. William Smith is the passer. Smith spins, kicks. Aminu, no, for death. Figures. Emery the latest. You put your foot down and it just goes. It's kind of saying. Rrr. Rrr. The Hemi did it. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. That Hemi hits hard. Man. Boom. Truck just kicked into gear. I completely forgot I was pulling a trailer. It was amazing. It was a smooth ride. Fantastic. That's how we roll. guy with a big O bell out. We'll beat any competitor's advertised tire price by 5%. Plus, we'll get you covered with the best warranty in the biz. Six months, same as cash financing. And our healthy car special, just $29.95. Big O's got you covered with a big O bell out. We got you covered at Big O. to go. Rich Cellini, Dave Bullwinkle here on the mountain. BYU in front of number six, Wake Forest. Demon Deacons a perfect 12-0 and entering play tonight. BYU was 11-1. 11-1. and The one loss, a one-pointer to Arizona State, a top-20 team, when actually a tip-in by a duo at the buzzer was waved off. Otherwise, this could have been two 12 and 0 clubs. Johnson. McGregor. Nice job by McGregor defensively, stepping up to contest the shot and getting the rebound. Emery won't fall. McGregor. Big board. Abuo harassed and turns it over. James Johnson had the defensive lockdown. Well, Abuo's touching his arm, thinks he got fouled. What Abuo needs to do is bring that arm up in an arm bar to protect the basketball. 11 turnovers for BYU. Defense! 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 
McFarland. Hale. T. Bump by McGregor. Well, what T just proved to the young freshman, Charles Abuo, is that he can go both directions, left and right. So you better play him honest and not try to force him to his weak hand, because it's not a weak hand. Teague scoreless thus far in the second half. That's his first point. He was tired from shooting the first half. 17. And that gets him right on his season average. 18 points for the sophomore Jeff Teague. He's playing with house money from here on in, and he may leave here a winner. For that bump by Smith. Smith has to recognize to play defense with your hand, your feet, not your hands. Those little bumps with the hands are going to get called. Play with your feet, not your hands. Mars will replace Buo. BYU with the nation's longest home winning streak, 53. Dead. Twenty points for Jimmer for that. McGregor behind McFarland. What he needs to do is play defense before the catch, not after the catch. And here we get a nice pass to for debt right there by Kamar showing why he's not just in the top 10 in scoring, but also in the top 10 in the conference in assists. The same as a year ago. We said a jack of all trades. McGregor and Fredette sit down. Miles and Lamont Morgan Jr. on the floor for BYU. McFarland going right at Miles and gets him to commit the foul. See, that's when you let your ego get in the way. Your pride gets in the way. You need to let him score on that. Concede a basket so you can come back and play later on. Now he's got four fouls. He's got to grab a piece of pine. And it's a foul. It was the bump. You can see Coach Gaudio in the background upset. The foul was even before the shot. I really like Miles. He's a tough, hard-nosed inside player. He's a good player. He just has to know when to back off and be a little less aggressive when you are in foul difficulty. Miles sits down with four. McGregor back in. He has three. And the depth at the post position favors Wake Forest. Well, one more foul on this side guy, and you're going in the game. Emery. Morgan. Emery's open. Too strong. Hale. Smith. Teague. A little closer. Missed the bank. McFarland. Air ball. Put back is good by James Johnson. Down to four. Got a gang rebound. Your best inside rebounder's out. That means all four perimeter people got to get on the board. Fourth foul on McGregor. his ground, lowers his, oh, that's a bloody, that's a bloody. Nice flop, but you know what, that's part of the game. Smith. Morgan, stolen by Teague, goes right after Tabernari, and gets the foul. First personal for Tabernari. A nickel dimer to quote Dick Vitale because Tabanari tries to get out of the way. And the fans agree with Dick Vitale. Dave Rose has grabbed the microphone here because 
someone in the BYU rooting section threw something on the floor. The classy move by BYU's head coach saying let the players play and the referees officiate and don't throw anything else on the floor. Defending Mountain West Conference champion BYU Cougars. Wonderful test to gear up for conference play. When you're talking about what Coach Rose did, this has been a great crowd all night. Very supportive behind the team. That's the first time anything's come on the floor. Teague has 20. More importantly, two point game. And McGregor has to play smart with four fouls now. For that. Now we're going to make one ref official call the bucket, the other is waving it off, and it's going to be a hold on Hale before the basket. The trail official had blown his whistle long before the other official couldn't hear it. So no basket for BYU. We have a timeout. 11.56 to go in the game. This is an Around the Mountain in 90 Seconds news break. The final game of our triple header here on the mountain is a conference matchup of teams coming off of big road wins. New Mexico took on its in-state rival New Mexico State for the second time this season, and the Lobos earned a hard-fought 68-66 victory. Now New Mexico takes on the running Rebels of UNLV, who beat Louisville in their last contest, and senior Tony Dandridge knows that Thomas and Mack will be an intimidating venue for the younger Lobo players. The, the, the fireworks, the everything, just the, the band. Um, Thomas and Max always hard, and, and uh, they'll, they'll see it. <laughs> they'll see it. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have them ready for it. We know we got our hands full. Uh, we're going to have to play awfully well to give ourselves a chance. We're going to have to have a lot of good things happen for us, get some good breaks, and that's not easy uh, in the Thomas Mack Center. They're, they're a very, very good team. Uh, they're even a better team there. So uh, very tough opener for us in the league. Tip-off for the Lobos and the Running Rebels is set for 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Now to hear more from Coach Alford and get a recap of the Wake Forest BYU game, stay tuned to Post Game Live following the conclusion of the game at the Marriott Center. I'm Bill Dolman for the Mountain. For all your Mountain West news, stay tuned to the Mountain. This copyrighted telecast of the Mountain West Conference is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience and any retransmission, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use or dissemination of this telecast or the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Mountain West Conference it is prohibited. The Marriott Center in Provo, Utah, and a sellout crowd over 22,000 on hand. Rich Cellini, Dave Bullwinkle. It's turned out to be a wonderful game. Another big one coming up on the mountain. New Mexico and UNLV, conference opener for both sides. Tavernari. Fredette. Tavernari's got a mismatch inside. He wants to take advantage of it. Tipped out of bounds by Aminu. Nino uses that length. The advantage of long arms getting those deflections. Deflections make your defense better because deflections lead to interceptions. Hale bumps Tavernari. Whistles have been plentiful in the second half. Well, one of the reasons is the officials want to make sure they have control of the game. They know this is really a high-level game with people playing very intently. See what 
the fish tail. <laughs> it's, it's like a fight. It's separating separate. Tavernari and Williams. But you know what I call that? I call that proactive officiating. Get in and separate before you got to call a foul. That's a good job by the men in stripes. Kamar. Tipped out. Kamar grabs it. Tavernari calls for it. Gets it. Drills it. 13 for Tavernari. Hale to answer. Kamar on the run out. Very bad job by Jeff T in defensive transition. He never saw Kamar behind him. At home, don't turn the volume down. Your TV's not broken. That's the crowd. Timeout, Wake Forest. Right away, Tavanari knows where he is. He does his homework early by getting his feet set and buries the jumper on the pass. Jonathan Tavernari, the Brazilian in his junior season, 20 and 10, their last game out against Tulsa. You know, he's played in big events like this. He plays not on the junior team, but on the Brazilian senior national team. He played in the Olympic trials last year in Athens in the zone playoffs. This is his kind of atmosphere. Wake just three of 12 from long range. Not their game. They guard the three, they don't shoot the three. Johnson down the lane in one. Wow. Tavernari's second foul. Well, I'm sure that the young man from Cheyenne, Wyoming, has a lot of family here to support him tonight, and he gave the family a show on this flush. And showed his strength to go through the foul. Unable to get the free throw. Aminu over the back. We have one team in the double bonus already. The other team, one free throw away from the bonus. And we still have 11 minutes to go. Check that. That was the seventh team foul. It's one and one. There'll be a lot of free throw shot in the next 12 minutes. Kamar to the line. 82% free throw shooter. Senior from Mesa, Arizona. First miss from the line tonight. Teague. Smith's floater off the glass. You know, Smith broke his foot in the fall, missed a lot of the fall. He just rounded into his shape, and he's giving a big effort tonight off the bench. Abuo halfway down and came back out. T. Johnson a little bit closer. Well defended, Tavernari. Well defended is right. Great, great play by McGregor stepping up, forcing him to shoot the jumper. Burdett draws the whistle. Smith got him on the arm. Jimmer will shoot a pair. Was a good freshman a year ago. Is an excellent sophomore, having really elevated his play in the offseason. What he's done really well is not just score, but become a good ball handler. When they lost Sam Burgess and Ben Murdoch to graduation, they needed somebody to step up and be able to be a good handler for him. And Fredette has done that. He's not a flashy handler, he's a steady handler. Twenty one points for Jimmy Fredette.
Last touch by Wake Forest. Johnson got a hand on it. BYU ball. But he didn't get two hands on it. He went after the ball, that casual effort. For that. To McGregor for the finish. Johnson's three. Seventy two sixty nine. Kamard trying to work around Johnson. For debt, Tabernari from the corner. Just did draw iron. Aminu off the bump uses the glass. One point game, nine minute mark. What a game. Kamar. Aminu, Smith, as Teague hits him on the wing. He gets pushed. He'll go to the line for a pair. That rebounding dominance is starting to show up right now for Wake Forest. But let's look at the other end here. We're going to see some good dribble penetration coming up right here. And you can see how McGregor does a good job of sliding into the open area. And as the dribble took place, he was looking pass all the way. That's a great relocation by McGregor to put himself in a position to receive the pass. Abuo will sit down. His fourth personal foul. McGregor will be spelled by the freshman Noah Hartsock. It's a tough place to have to come in. 8 35 to go, and it's your first time on the floor tonight. Just don't make a mistake. Play hard, get a rebound. Don't worry about anything at the offensive end except screening. Tied at 72. And here comes the screen for Jimmer. Aminu, Williams, Smith, Teague, and McFarlane. On the floor for Wake Forest. Kamard swatted away. Williams. With the miss. We'll stay on this side. Wake Forest ball. Williams is looking forward to chinning on the rim instead of following and finishing the play. And it popped it right out of there. His grab on the rim kept that thing from going in. Here's that flat on the baseline look and the out-of-bounds play. They'll go over the top and a quick post-up. Take the three. 75-72. It's been a while since w Wake led. A 9-0 Demon Deacon run. One of the things that we said has really changed here is the ability of the Demon Deacons to get to the line and to not own the glass. You know he's got a quick release. You know he's got a quick release. If you're Jackson Emery, you have to be closer to him on the catch. Jeff Teague. 24 points on 7 of 10 shooting. Second largest crowd in the history of the Marriott Center tonight. 23,096. They list capacity at 22,700. We got a shoehorn to get you and me in here. Maybe the people brought in their tents who were outside. Tents, televisions, heaters. I think heaters were the most important component. Oh, support. But it's hot in this building. And not just the temperature, the way these two teams have played from a shooting perspective. Yeah, they were in line early. Students get in free, but it's first come, first serve on those seats. Wonderful setting. 
Kamar. Too strong. Aminu, big board. You said great setting. It's one of the things that demonstrates Mountain West Conference basketball, why it's so good. The crowds and the venues. Aminu, shove. In the back, we have a timeout. 75 72. Three point game in Provo. Everything on this everyday value menu is only a dollar. I hear you, Great man. Great deals, man. Junior Deluxe Burger, a dollar. Chicken strip sandwich, a dollar. Got the small tot for... Whoa. Wow, this usually doesn't happen. What was that? The new everyday value menu at Sonic. Got a buck? Then drive in for a variety of great food, like a Junior Deluxe Burger, a chicken strip sandwich, or grab a delicious Junior Breakfast Burrito for just a dollar. Sonic's new everyday value menu. All this for a buck each. Uh, we were kind of in the middle of something. Yeah, what happened there? West Conference online store is the place to get all of your officially licensed MWC championship gear and team apparel. The Mountain West Conference online store is where MWC fans get everything they need. Yeah! Do you need get 250 Hilton Honors bonus points. Real value from your friends at Hampton. 7.43 remaining, number six, Wake Forest 12-0 and 0 against BYU, lurking just outside the top 25. Big O tire scoreboard around the Mountain West. Utah gets off on a good note. Utah holds through, they're home. Here's a big one, though. Air Force, not as good as the last few years, but I'll tell you what, if San Diego State can go and include an arena and get a win, that's really a step forward in their aspirations to win the Mountain West. And TCU with the new coaching staff trying to hold serve at home. So important in this conference. No question. You must win at home and on the road, not lose to somebody you should beat. Then you're in a position to win a conference title. BYU has done just that. You're defending conference champions. 53 straight here at the Marriott Center, the nation's longest home winning streak. McGregor missed the free throw. But a game of runs. Aminu, nice move, and he knows he's got somebody who has to play soft on him. Yeah, McGregor's done a good job, but he's got to be soft until they can get Miles back in. Miles also has four fouls. Come on. To McGregor, blocked by Johnson Tavernari. <laughs> oh, can he lure you to sleep? You get penalized for the block shot. Instead of giving it up a two, you give up a tray. 16 for Tavernari. Teague thought about it, passed it up. Dive by Emery. Six on the shot clock. Smith. Put that for a little athletic play and a finish by Johnson. Well, Kamar fell asleep. Johnson snuck behind him. Blocking foul on Smith. Four fouls on Ishmael Smith. Here gets the Lob behind the zone. On the right side, you'll see Kamar. He lost sight of Johnson, and Johnson showed that even though he's a big, strong body, he can get up in the air. Jackson Emery. Here's a team that's leading the Mountain West Conference in free throw shooting. And missing is coming back to haunt them right now. Emory averages eight a night, sitting on ten. It's 
one of two. 11 points for Jackson Emery. Three point game. Aminu pinned and he dribbles it off the baseline. Turnover. Got to be a little more patient. Amino learned that he's only a freshman. He's only played 13 major college games. Let the game slow down a little bit. Whistle away from the ball and a hold. Minu, fourth personal foul. Another look. See if we can catch him. Oh, yeah, he's got his hands wrapped around Kamar trying to make a cut there. Lee Kamar never missed a game in his BYU career. 111 straight. For a man with a thin frame, he ended up being the all-time durable one in BYU history. He may look like Opie Cunningham, but he doesn't play like Opie Cunningham. They whittled it down to one. Aminu. Smith, little jumper. Aminu and Kamar, Tavernari, Fredette. Wake Forest back in front as T draws the foul. Do you feel like it might be back in Vegas at a heavyweight fight instead of in Provo? We're trading punches on this one. Chris Miles has fouled out. Nice dribble penetration, and when you shoot a soft ball, you get those kind of makes. And Miles goes out with number five. Miles and McGregor, the one-two punch down low for BYU. Miles done at the 521 mark. McGregor just one to give. And really, Abuo has been an inside factor as well. But he hasn't played much since the early part of the second half, when I thought he played very well for Coach Rose. Well, if you're McGregor now, you've got to play down the stretch the last 521. As I say, it's time to earn your scholarship. Teague scored 26 a year ago against BYU. Winston-Salem, he has 27 in Provo. Two-point lead for the sixth-ranked Demon Deacons. Tavernari. Emery fights for the board. Kamar. Johnson has been a machine on the boards. He has 10 rebounds for Wake Forest. Williams. Tavernari tips it to himself. Great job. If you can't clear it yourself, tip it to yourself. For that, right at McFarland block. Here comes Smith. Williams with the flush. With authority. Remember we said about the altitude? The Farlers calls to come out. Johnson swats one away from Kamar. Baseline won't go. Last touch by Wake Forest. It stays BYU basketball. 4,553 feet. Provo, Utah. Dave Rose. 53 and 1 at home as a head coach. Yeah. 
Kamard. Johnson's pass is tipped. Intercepted by Fredette. Tavernari. Emery. Thirteen for Jackson Emery. And the crowd is back on their feet. Really, only one shooter on the floor right now for Wake. That's number zero, T. And we have a 30-second timeout. Jackson Emery, the sophomore from Alpine, Utah, returned from his mission in June and is quickly rounded into shape for BYU. He's done a little bit of everything. Early in the game, he gets that deflection and a layup out of his defense. He's knocked down threes, especially in the corner, where he's been very effective. And plays the inside-out game very nicely. This is the first time I've seen Jackson Emery. He's really a great addition back on this team. One timeout remaining for Wake Forest. BYU has three. Wake sitting right on their average of 84 points. But there's 320 to go. It's been a funny second half. It wasn't quite as fast paced as, as it was in the first half. But now it's starting to pick up energy like they're rolling downhill as they're coming towards the buzzer. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Wake's going to have to get his shot up quickly. Still, be concerned about Teague. He's the only shooter on the floor. Smith. Travel. Wake Forest, undefeated, has a two point lead. 3.13 to go. Timeout. We're out here racing Punch it. luxury trucks. I mean, I can't think of a better word, but fantastic. Woo! Yeah, that's what I like about it. Yeah! This thing rocks. <laughs> wow, that's cool. The Mountain presents Legends, profiling the iconic figures in Mountain West sports. Coming up, former UNLV men's basketball coach Jerry Tarkanian. I knew right from day one I wanted to be a coach. He knew talent right off. He could go in the gym and look at a kid and could tell you, this kid is going to be good. He would take a lot of players from junior colleges and say, you know, we have an opportunity for you. He did it with motivation. He did it with, in two words, Rebel Pride. Legends, Jerry Tarkanian, January 10th at 6 on The Mountain. You're good. Right there, that's good, Kevin. Coach Johnson enjoys wearing two hats, but it's a tight-knit community where most folks wear a couple of different hats, especially those who get involved. During baseball season, Coach puts in some long days between practice, the games, and his two Sinclair stations. People need gas and groceries, and Coach wants to be there for them. That's just the way it is when you get involved with people's lives. Sinclair, we're about as American as it gets. Mountain West Conference basketball continues coming up on Tuesday. LSU and Utah at the Huntsman Center. That's at 7. And then on Wednesday, women's action, Utah versus Wyoming from the High Plains. That's a 7.